There are three ways to set up partitions. The main desktop partition UI, the customized desktop partition UI, and the quick desktop partition UI. For the main desktop partition UI, navigate to the desktop partition pane. If it is not already on, turn on desktop partition by clicking here. Select a predefined partition layout by clicking any of the icons. The current partition layout is highlighted to show it is active. The partitions are now there, but they are not visible. To see the partitions, click the Identify button. Click anywhere to make them invisible again. If you need to start over, click the undivided icon on the Desktop Partitions pane to remove all of the partitions. Customized Desktop Partition lets you put the partitions exactly where you want them. It also lets you change the size of the partition. Depending on your screen size, you can have 32 or more partitions on one screen. While this is not practical, it is good to know that you have an incredible amount of flexibility to personalize your screen real estate. To open Customize Desktop Partition UI, click on the Customize button on the main Desktop Partition UI. This opens a layer that temporarily takes over the screen. In the upper right corner are customized tools. From left to right, there is a Save folder for saving the customized desktop partition layout and closing the UI, an Undo arrow so you can undo the last action multiple times, a trash can for removing one partition, an eraser for removing all partitions, and an X for exiting the customized desktop UI partition without saving. I'll explain more about these tools in a minute. Now notice that the cursor is a large plus sign. Click once anywhere on the screen and a horizontal line appears. I'll delete that line. If you click too close to an edge, the line will appear further from the edge so the partition is not too small. I'll keep clicking and keep adding partitions. I'll erase all of the partitions. You can move any boundary line. Click once to place a line. Hover the cursor over the line and the cursor changes to a double-headed arrow. Now you can drag the line one way or the other. Click to place another line and move that line. I'll erase those partitions. To make a vertical line, click twice. Clicking once puts a horizontal line. The second click rotates it vertically. You can move a vertical line just like you move a horizontal line. So, the first click creates a horizontal line, the second click rotates it to a vertical line, and the third click deletes the line. Now let's see how the tools work. Clicking on the Save folder saves the current customized desktop partition layout and closes the customized partition UI. Any changes you make will not be saved until you click here. Clicking the Undo arrow will undo the last action. You can click the Undo arrow multiple times to undo each successive earlier action. For example, if you click twice to create a vertical line, clicking the Undo arrow once goes back to that line being horizontal. Clicking the Undo arrow again makes the line disappear. Clicking the trash can deletes a currently highlighted line. So if you have an existing line, click on it once to highlight it, then click on the trash can to delete it. Clicking on the eraser deletes all of the partitions at once. Let's go back to the undo arrow again. If you create several partitions, then select one of them and use the trash can to delete it, you can use the undo arrow to get back that line. This also works with the eraser. If you click the eraser to delete all of the partitions, you can click on the undo arrow to bring them all back. Clicking on the X closes the customized desktop partition UI and brings you back to the main UI. It is important to note that clicking the X does not save the current partition layout. When you hover over the X, you get a reminder of this, but it is best to get in the habit of using the Save folder to exit the customized desktop partition UI, not the X. The quick desktop partition UI is my favorite part of desktop partition because it is so simple. 
When desktop partition is enabled, grabbing any window and moving it makes the quick desktop partition UI appear. In it, you can see all of the current partitions that you have set up, whether they were created from the predefined icons on the main desktop partition UI or the customized desktop partition UI. To send a window to a partition, click and drag a window's title bar, then with the mouse button still pressed down, move the cursor around in the quick desktop partition UI until the desired partition is highlighted, then release the mouse button. The window will be sent to the partition that was highlighted. Here is the quick part of this UI. When you click and drag a window's title bar and the quick desktop partition UI appears, you can slowly move the cursor in the UI and see smaller partitions that are available even though they have not been created yet. Releasing the mouse button in one of these new partitions sends the window to that partition. If after using the quick desktop partition UI, you want to further customize the partitions, you can go back into the customized desktop partition UI and make adjustments to the new partitions. You can move them, delete them, or create new partitions. Just remember to exit by clicking the save folder, not the X. Desktop partition works the same way on multiple displays. There are just a few things to remember. In the main desktop partition UI, there will be a box that indicates the display that is being affected by the desktop partition. If necessary, use this box to select a different display to create and manage the partitions. In the customized desktop partition UI, Simply moving the plus cursor to a different screen moves the tools to that display so you can create and manage the partitions on that display. The best part of desktop partition on multiple displays is that you can use the quick desktop partition UI to send a window to a partition on a different display. Whenever the application is running, there is an icon in the task tray that gives you some control over the desktop partition settings. Right click on the task tray icon and a menu appears. Find Windows has a menu that lists all of the windows that are open. Sometimes windows can get hidden. Selecting a window from the list brings that window to the foreground of your display. Desktop partition has a menu that lists the same predefined partitions as the main UI. Identify partitions is just like clicking the identify button in the main UI. Select this to see the current partition locations. Disable desktop partition is like the checkbox in the main UI. Selecting this turns off the partitions. Spend a few minutes playing with these options and you'll quickly see how effective desktop partition can be.